thanks for the opportunity to present this uh, work here. So my name is uh, Maarten Bredels. I uh, work at the University of Groningen, the uh, Kaptein Astronomical Institute. And today I want to show uh, basically the solutions that we're developing uh, to, uh, to work with the billion stars and uh, specifically in the Jupiter Notebook. So what you're seeing here is, are actually a billion stars visualized. So I'll start with the, uh, the uh, motivation, like why, why did we actually do all of this? Uh, I'll show you uh, uh, the solution, uh, and then I'll give two demos. So I'll start with facts in the in a notebook, uh, and then afterwards I'll um, uh, use IPy widgets, and I'll show you IPy volume uh, after that. So the motivation actually is um, uh, the Gaia satellite. That's, uh, so it's in space uh, for a few years already, and it's uh, constantly scanning the sky. And the goal is to determine uh, really accurately the, uh, the positions, velocities, and uh, like astrophysical parameters, like how much metal, for instance, there are in, uh, in stars, uh, for more than a billion stars or other objects in, uh, in the Milky Way. So we have one data release, the first catalog is out. Uh, it doesn't have all of this, so it has uh, sky positions and uh, uh, magnitudes, so how bright the star is. Um, but it's, uh, it's a nice uh, uh, catalog to, uh, to test this uh, out. So we, um, we have this data set, uh, like more than a billion uh, stars. So how do you work with this? You want to like visualize this. You want to see the data. Uh, for instance, one of the things you want to do is uh, uh, quality checks. I mean, are there like weird artifacts in the data? Are, are all the reductions done uh, properly? And in the end, you want to do science. You want to like plot things, see relationships or clustering. And in this case, by visualizing this, you're the, like the neural network uh, looking at the data. So let me demonstrate what the issue is. Uh, so the traditional way, like uh, you do a scatter plot, but uh, let me show how it does not work. Uh, so what I'm going to do is plot the sky coordinates of uh, the, uh, this uh, uh, data set, the Gaia data set. Um, and I start with a thousand points and I'll go to a billion points. So now we're at, so you see it's a disk, we have a million, hundred million, and basically you see nothing. So instead, if we count how many objects there are in a particular bin and color it in proportion to uh, how many stars there are in or the log of that, then you see much more detail. For instance, here you're seeing the large Magellanic Cloud, one of our neighboring galaxies, and the small Magellanic Cloud. You see we live in a disky galaxy with, um, so some of these features are like uh, dust features, but you also see that there are patterns in it. So these are issues with the data reduction because uh, um, the, uh, the data is just from uh, one year of uh, getting data. So it's nice to make such an image, but can we like zoom into the LMC? Like I want to zoom in here and see what it looks like in detail. So how long does it take to do? Can we do this interactively? And can we explore this data set? Can I like do selections? Um, so let's first do a, like a really simple calculation. What, what do we have? We have like a billion rows uh, and we have two columns. And each value is like uh, eight bytes, uh, double precision floats. So you have 15 gigabytes of data. And say your memory bandwidth that you have between memory and CPU, is something like uh, between 10 and 20 uh, gigabytes a second. So you can transfer the data from memory to CPU in a, in a second. So a second is reasonable. And if you look at the CPU, so you take your desktop, it's a three gigahertz multi-core system, you have something like 12, 24 cycles a second. So you can do a few multiplications, divisions, but that's it. You can't like draw nice glyphs or do like complex operations. So you have to keep it simple. And yes, if you try it out, you can make such an image in like one second. So this is the full Gaia data set again. A uh, few caveats, it, you need to be able to fit some of this in memory, not the whole data set, but what you're using. Uh, otherwise uh, you're down to the, uh, the performance of your hard drive. And you need proper storage. I mean, if you're going to store this in comma-separated files, it will take you like an hour to just read in the data. Um, and you need some simple and fast algorithms for the binning, but that's the simplest uh, uh, problem. Um, so how do you store the data? Well, you want to store it like the CPU understands it, so you don't have to do any conversion. And you want to do it column-based, such that if you like read in a column, that it's all sequentially read. Right? Um, and we're using HDF5 for that. So let me demonstrate what's happening if you, uh, if you read in data, what are you doing? So usually you allocate a piece of memory here on the right, 
And then you say to the operating system, well, please read some uh, data from file. And what the operating system is doing is uh, saying to the hard drive, well, put it here in my operating system cache. And then uh, the kernel gets a message or the CPU and it knows that and then it copies it to your uh, private uh, memory, uh, to your array. And uh, then your program gets a message like, okay, it's read, now you can continue. And what you're doing, you're reading it back again in the CPU. And that's a bit of a waste of like, why would you actually do this? Can't we like do this, directly access the uh, cache of the memory? And that's actually what you get when you do memory mapping. It doesn't guarantee that, that all operating systems uh, do this. Uh, it wouldn't make sense not to do it this way. And you avoid the memory copy. And if you think that's not important, I mean, copying 15 gigabytes of data is already a, a second. So that will make it, uh, things at least like two times as slow. So we can create these like uh, 2D density maps, like histograms. So why not go to 1D? include that as well so we can do like 1d histograms and maybe like 3d histograms so you can use volume rendering to to visualize something and to complete it why not do zero dimensional like count the number of uh, non-missing values and so now we have like counts but you can also think of other statistics so here it's showing the correlation between two uh, values like here the velocity uh, two velocity components for each pixel and you can do the same in 1D, so basically a, a mean in bins or zero dimensional. And in 3D, you can think, well, I mean, you can make a, a calculation in 3D, but not visualize it in 3D, but do like slices. And that's what the uh, Python library FEX uh, 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 does. You can think of it as a, um, a pandas-like library, but then for large data set. Pretty simple API, just one class. To, uh, to wrap some of the NumPy arrays, and the rest are just like basic data types. And uh, it focuses mostly on uh, ND statistics, like on regular uh, statistics on n-dimensional grids, like counts, means, max, uh, standard deviations, etc. So on a, a reasonable desktop computer, um, you get about a billion rows a second. So that's 50 times faster than uh, bin statistics if you're using that and about two times faster or more than, uh, than data shader, which is try to tackle a similar, uh, similar problem. On this laptop, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit less than that, uh, something like uh, between 0 0.1, 0 0.2 uh, billion rows uh, per second. Uh, it's an older MacBook Air and it's uh, basically CPU bound. Uh, so it calculates its n-dimensional grids, but you want to visualize this. There's, so there's some wrappers for matplotlib, but I'll also show some other uh, uh, ways to visualize, uh, visualize the data. So what kind of data can you use uh, for this library? Well, astronomical uh, catalogs, like I showed you the Gaia catalog, but there are more and they're more coming, like LSST will be like even larger. But also for embody simulations, basically rows and columns, so any tabular data. And I will show uh, in the demo, I'll use the uh, New York taxi data set, which is a data set uh, of uh, pickup locations and drop-off locations of, uh, of uh, taxis. Um, or just like a lot of GPS, uh, GPS coordinates from the uh, OpenStreetMap uh, uh, website. Uh, but sometimes you want to do like transformations of your data. Like I, don't, I have a column X and Y, but I want to have the sum of that. Uh, so let's say these are NumPy arrays, you add them together and these are like a billion uh, uh, values, you're wasting eight gigabytes of RAM. So it's not something you want to, uh, to do. So what in fact, what you can do, everything is an expression and not the eight gigabytes is uh, uh, used, but instead it's uh, doing it in chunks. So it's not wasting your memory. And if you use particular expressions a lot, you can add like a virtual column, like, like you would have it in a database and it's calculated on the fly. Just makes it shorter to use. But sometimes you don't use all the data. You want to use like some filtering, so you need subsets. But you can't copy the data. I mean, the data usually doesn't even fit in memory. So if you make a few copies, that doesn't work. So uh, you can do selections, and it will keep a Boolean mask. And you can use that to uh, calculate particular statistics. So here I select everything greater than zero for x, and can give it a name. And then you can use it in the calculation of uh, statistics. And for instance, uh, we'll see, like, we have two uh, views of the data, and one, one thing we want to do, we see a clump here. How does it look in the other panel? 
So let me um, uh, give you a bit of a demo to demonstrate uh, uh, how you would use this. So uh, some imports. So we import facts, NumPy, Matplotlib. I'll make the fonts a bit bigger and just uh, uh, open a data set. So you see, this is a, a, a 23 gigabyte data set, but there's like, it costs no time to read this in because it's just using memory mapping. It didn't do anything. It just, the, the arrays point to the data and that's it. So in this data set, so this is, this is the New York Taxi data set for 2015. It contains 150 million rows. Uh, so these are like the columns. So we'll focus on uh, the drop off, uh, longitude and latitude. Um, it's total amount, so how much money they paid and the trip distance, how long the, uh, the trip was. And you see some of the data here. So let's start with the zero dimensional statistics. Well, count is equal to the number of, uh, of rows, or you can count like the non-missing values. And sometimes the first time it takes a little while because it's reading in the data. After that, it's, uh, it's fast. You calculate like a mean. And if you want to calculate uh, something like in bins of uh, uh, a particular value, you use like equivalent to SQL group by, but now it's like regular bins, so bin by, and these are the limits. And you get your NumPy array where it's the count in these bins. You can plot this, this if you want. And if you want to do this in uh, like 2D, you, uh, instead you give a list of, uh, of columns or expressions actually. You can give it a shape. For instance, this is simply a 2D array containing uh, um, uh, the counts in each bin. You can im show that, right? You can probably recognize New York, but it's you need to transpose and etc. Uh, to get the uh, uh, the orientation correct. So let me show you how to do. So I'm calculating the limits, so I don't have, uh, the program doesn't have to do this uh, all the time. So instead, there's a, a simple plot uh, command. So it, uh, to make this easier for you, it gives you labels and color, uh, a color bar. So people that know New York, I don't, but uh, I know now this is an airport. There are like two airports. They're clearly visible. You can see all the streets. But let's say you're a taxi driver. Where should I pick up people? Where, where, uh, where do people pay the most? So you can say what kind of statistics to, uh, 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 to show. So here, the mean of the total amount. So what would be a good place to, uh, uh, to pick up people? So the um, uh, dark, so this is like $50. So it looks like the airport is a reasonable place, right? Makes sense. But actually, I mean, these are probably long distance trips, so uh, maybe we should look at it like uh, uh, per kilometer or per mile, probably. There's a bit of an issue with the uh, trip distance, if you calculate the uh, min-max. So you see now it took like 710 milliseconds. If I do it again, it's much faster because it's now fully in memory. So there's some outliers there. So let's take a look at the 1D distribution. So I'm considering now using uh, select uh, ev everything um, outside this range as outliers. And then what we can do, we can plot like the, uh, uh, how, how much uh, per, per mile uh, people pay. And now you see that the airports may not be the best region actually. So some regions here are much darker than here. So, but yeah. This one maybe? Mute, it says. Okay. <laughs> so the title is uh, A Billion Stars in the Notebook. Let me see if the, uh, no, I need to connect to. Shall I put it here? Does that? Yes. Gives me time to set this up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's uh, you can also connect to uh, to another server. 
it's not so relevant, I'm not going to discuss it, but uh, just, uh, uh, so I'm opening now a data set that's on a, a server at our work, uh, because I don't need to transfer like all the data, I just need to transfer the statistics. So the, the, the billion stars are sitting there on our server, and uh, uh, I, I just connect to, uh, to that. It's over a WebSocket, if you're wondering what this, uh, this means. So with, uh, how long is it? So it's a billion, billion rows. If this confuses you, these are Python 3.6 uh, uh, f strings, if you're wondering. And now you can plot like a billion stars. It's pretty fast. But okay, uh, for some applications, this is enough, right? You want to look at the data, but you want to do this interactively, like zoom in, uh, select things. So that brings me to, uh, to the next demo. And for this, I need to uh, introduce you a little bit to IPy widgets. I can't give you like a full tutorial, but uh, but uh, uh, let me just show, give you a flavor of what it uh, can do. Don't let this stop you. There's something weird with the building. Why is not Oh yes, but that's a different mic. Yeah, yeah, this is for the recording. So. Please do not let us ignore the exit to the next talk. Please be gone. Yeah. So, um, yeah, sure. Is this better? Yeah. Great. So, uh, I'm importing IPy widgets. I make a slider. And you just get a slider, as you expect. Mm -hmm. you can, so, you can, like, print them out. But they're rich objects. A text object. And I can change this to three. And it's directly re reflected in the in the notebook so i can read this out directly or i can set them actually so the this one and if i execute this it's directly reflected in the group or you can link them together and actually this updates itself and if you set them because they're linked it will be yeah so it's a rich library actually i can't cover all of it but based on this library you can build your own library um, so that's, uh, for instance, one library is bqplot, which has a matplotlib-like uh, interface. But instead of being like a, a static like image, it's actually something you can like zoom in, etc. So you understand where this is going to. And you can change things from the notebook. So if you change it, it directly updates it. So. You can do things like selections, and these selections, you again, it's synchronized to the notebook, so you can read out what's selected, or the other way around. You just so the, this is like synchronized. Um, so another uh, a package that's like an, uh, a leaflet. Uh, so leaflet is like a uh, uh, shows you like a map, like Google Maps. So IPy leaflet bridges this, uh, so that you can use it in the notebook. So or somewhere here. And you can add like layers on top of this, like images. So, <laughs> so maybe you see where this is going to. So now I'm, so I'm in a separate notebook. This is a separate like kernel. Uh, and I open the New York taxi data set again. Uh, it doesn't cost me any extra memory because, the, because of memory mapping, it's actually using the same memory. So it, I, you don't need any extra for that. And instead of plot, I use plot widget, and I tell tell the uh, uh, to use the IPy uh, leaflet uh, backend. So now you can overlay the whole data set on New York. And you can zoom in, and on the fly, it will calculate uh, like the density, uh, this density map. Um, but you can do more, and I implemented some like simple, uh, 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 say, types of plots. So what I'm doing. I'm showing the drop-off locations, but I'm using a third axis, which is the uh, drop-off hour. And I'm making 24 slices uh, for, the, uh, for each hour. And I uh, connect like a slider to this to show me the, uh, uh, the hour. So this is midnight. And let's focus on this region. It's now r pretty dark. Uh, so I don't have a color map yet for this uh, for the widget. So uh, this color scale, is so uh, um, low is um, uh, like a, a dark color, and bright color is high. 
So if we go to the morning, then all of the sudden, so this space becomes really bright. So there are lots of people being uh, uh, dropped off at this uh, place. But it, I noticed this because like later in the day, nobody wants to go there for some reason. So, so is this like a bad area? Like, it's close to it actually. But it's a, con a convention center. I mean, why would you go there in the evening? So you can see that everybody, r most people, some early, but most people arrive there at eight, nine. Makes sense. Um, so for the last uh, uh, demonstration, I'm switching to a different data set. So this is a simulation uh, because we don't have the full data set yet of Gaia of um, uh, what we believe the halo component of the Milky Way looks like. So that's like the spherical component. So not the flat disk, but more the stars. And uh, we believe they're uh, for a large part made out uh, of uh, like smaller galaxies that, mixed, uh, that are mixed together and similar in this simulation. So what you're seeing here are actually uh, 33 like smaller satellites mixed together and you can't distinguish them. But if you look in other spaces, like um, uh, energy momentum around the z-axis, which is the symmetry axis of the system, and the energy, then you see actually that there are, if you can count them, uh, 33 blobs in this space. They, they still recollect, they still have memory of, of uh, uh, how they started before they uh, were mixed. And now you can like, select this and see, hey, this is indeed like one of these uh, objects. But uh, thank you. But our galaxy is 3D, right? So um, um, we want to see what this looks like in uh, in 3D, and it will look really different. In, well, quite different in 3D. Um, so we want to have a, a 3D visualization library or plotting library uh, for the notebook, but uh, there wasn't anything, at least not some, something I could uh, use. So what do you do? You make it yourself. Um, so that resulted in a Python package called IPy Volume. It's a 3D plotting for the uh, Jupyter Notebook. So it's based on the IPy widgets and using WebGL for rendering. It's uh, pretty young, it started around Christmas. And uh, what it currently can do is like gl a glyph rendering uh, plus volume rendering. And um, um, what's nice, uh, uh, since IPy widget 6 is out, if you look at the documentation, you can actually like put snippets of code in there and you can look at the output and it's like interactive. So this is the documentation. Oh, sorry, Glyph is like um, uh, like in 3D visualization, like like these, like these are spheres, uh, can be uh, like symbols. Uh, or quiver, uh, quiver plots like uh, arrows. Um, and because it's, uh, it's based on IPy widgets, you can, uh, uh, connect sliders to it for the size or like a color picker and and that's the nice thing because I didn't make this but because it's uh, well I, I did the 3d uh, part I did but not the sliders but because it they're all IPython widgets they all like glue together and you can make like small uh, applications uh, with it there's one thing funny thing that I needed to do uh, to do and that's this button um, because it's in the browser, you can do. Uh, uh, you can also do it on your phone. And if you have like a Google Cardboard, you can do like VR. <laughs> it's uh, it's a bit of a gimmick, but uh, it's way cheaper than say an Oculus Rift. So if you just want to try something out, it's. Uh, I, I bought like one of these. So so you can try these. <laughs> This, this doesn't work for me. For some people, it, it depends on like uh, your eyes. But this is like 15 euros, and you get like a USB controller. I didn't uh, have that, but you can also connect that uh, to it. But uh, to me, it's convincing. But it's yeah, a bit of a gimmick. So what does it look like in, co in code? So the most important thing for me was volume rendering, because you have like 3D cubes, and you want to like visualize uh, that. So. Uh, this is just a function that I'm, uh, I'm plotting here. And you can change like the transfer function if that means anything uh, for you. Um, but I needed also glyphs, um, like scatter plots. 
click here and um, instead of like oh, okay maybe I need to change the color to green you can just set it from the notebook change the size and and change that and you'll notice that everything is uh, um, like interpolated everything changes slowly that's actually inspired by BQ plot which uh, was using uh, d3 and I thought it would it, it helps instead of something like suddenly changing you see things uh, slowly changing um, and that actually so uh, someone noticed this package and he needed it for uh, um, he, he basically needed animations um, so that resulted in a pull request and some some polishing on my uh, on my side and some some additions and what you can put in is like a sequence of uh, data sets for instance, here. And because the, everything is interpolated, also positions and, and directions, etc., you can get away with a really coarse time step and it gets interpolated. So you can do this. And this also runs out of, like in the browser. So you can bring this like to a meeting, for instance, uh, on your tablet. Uh, Oh yeah, in an early uh, uh, early Easter egg, you can render cats. <laughs> <laughs> They're po not pointing the right direction, but I'm working on that. <laughs> but rendering cat was not really the real purpose of this. So the uh, <laughs> what I wanted to do is to have um, uh, a 3D backend for uh, uh, for effects. So take 3D volumes and uh, also grids on a coarser uh, uh, um, uh, scale to visualize not only like the densities, but also like the, uh, the velocities. So this is the same structure that you saw above, um, but there's an issue. So the, uh, it's also showing like really low density regions and it's uh, plotting a, like a, a vector there. And again, you can re-execute this or you just like you stop completion and find what's there. And there's this attribute. And if you change this, you don't visualize the ones that have like small counts, like 50. So you can change this. Maybe this should be like 60 or 70. Oh, we change the color. Let's change this a bit. So now this is, so let me go back. So this was the, uh, the 2D uh, 2D version of this, uh, what we would call a, a stellar stream. And this is the 3D version. And you have a much better idea how this object looked like in, in 3D. And you can also see, th so these are the uh, velocities, so the mean velocity at each uh, uh, position, how this stream is moving in space. So uh, say you want to change the color in red, or you don't know, and you just like on the fly, you can attach a color picker to it and change the color of the uh, of the glyphs. All thanks to IPy widgets. Um, or uh, if you want to show this to a colleague, or you want to uh, bring this to a meeting on your tablet, you just save it to uh, HTML, and you can maybe do stereo. <laughs> Um, yeah. So uh, to finish off with the, uh, I mean, I was talking about the billion stars in the Jupyter notebook. Again, I'm connecting to uh, uh, to the server, um, and I'm just showing all the data. And you can like interactively zoom in, and it takes about. It should take a second. Maybe sometimes the first time it takes longer. Yeah. And so this is one of the, uh, the um, uh, our neighboring satellites, the uh, Large Mag Magellanic Cloud. And even if this is a billion stars, you can just make a selection, like this cluster here, and make maybe like make one uh, the one uh, the histograms. So uh, ah, yeah. So there are. Uh, well, if you if you know what uh, what these objects are, this probably makes sense to you. But to, just to demonstrate what you uh, that you can do selections for a billion stars. 
So to conclude, so uh, I showed you uh, facts which can handle n-dimensional statistics on, on regular grid. It can uh, do on a reasonable uh, uh, desktop uh, about a billion uh, rows per second. Uh, can do efficient transformations of data, so you can calculate the mean of a particular expression. Um, and these can be used for visualization, like um, I showed you matplotlib, but you can build your own. I mean, if you have imshow, uh, that's basically enough. <laughs> And you can do this interactive now in the uh, in the notebook, thanks to IPyWidget, BQplot, and uh, IPyLeaflet, and also in 3D uh, for IPyVolume, which adds uh, 3D interactivity uh, now, which can also be used for facts. And uh, also works outside of the uh, the notebook in the browser, so you can put it on your tablet or, or give it to uh, to colleagues. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs>